The crossbench has pushed Parliament to declare a climate emergency as bushfires continue to rage in Queensland. Greens MP Adam Bant is leading the charge as Australia is labelled an embarrassing laggard when it comes to climate change action. Joining us live now is Adam Bant from the Greens Party as well as former Liberal leader John Hewson. So I think we do have a major climate event <coughs> that hell's frozen over and Liberals have joined with the Greens. <laughs> this is pretty extraordinary you're coming together. Well, this. you know, the issue is more important than either of us. Though. This is about facts and science really and some things should be above politics and understanding the dire state of the climate emergency should be one of those. Look, you don't have the numbers with the crossbench in the lower house at the moment. Are you hoping some Liberal MPs will actually cross the floor to support this climate change emergency? Well, I am. I mean, before the election, Scott Morrison was out telling everyone that he believed in the science of climate change and now, um, barely a few days later, you've got a minister saying he's not even sure if climate change is real. But I know that there are a few Liberal backbenchers who do believe in the science of climate change and look at what the government is doing with embarrassment. And I mean, we're moving this motion because the first step in fixing a problem is admitting that you've got a problem. I mean, the students get it, which is why you're going to see millions uh, out on the streets for the global climate strike on the 20th. The international community gets it. UK's declared a climate emergency. France has, Canada has, and you know there are Conservatives in those parliaments and in, indeed in those governments as well. There's a global summit in a few weeks of leaders uh, in New York to, to work out how to uh, cut pollution even faster. Um, and so I am optimistic that we can get the numbers in the House of Representatives and in the Senate, uh, if, the, if there's a free vote, to have Australia join the international community and recognise the severity of the problem. John Hewson, this is pretty extraordinary to come out against your own party's policy. Uh, you have been quite critical of this issue of climate change and the Liberal Party's dealing with it in the past. Mm. What's compelled you to do this today? Well, look, I have a view that the party had a very good policy in the early 90s, which was my policy, a 20% cut in emissions by the year 2000 off a 1990 base. If we'd done that and sustained that, we'd be way past the tariff, the, uh, the Paris tar uh, targets and we'd... Uh, have created so probably hundreds of thousands of jobs, billions of dollars of investment. Scott Morrison does say we're meeting those targets in a canter. You don't agree? Yeah, well, he's sort of taking benefits from the past and uh, he's probably using some credits from offshore. I mean, we have to focus on the magnitude of the task in this country. Although our, uh, we are one of the highest per capita emitters in the world, we, of course, have um, um, a global responsibility as one of the, I think, the second largest exporter of fossil fuels in the world, LNG and and coal. So I think we need to start thinking about our global responsibilities as well as our, our, our domestic challenges. And in those terms, I mean, the idea of this to me is to give all the parliamentarians a conscious vote and let them be accountable from this day on or from the day that the vote is taken on to their constituents, to their children, to their grandchildren, to future generations, uh, as to what their stance was on what is the most challenging issue of this century. Adam Bant, uh, you're going to be accused of this being a political stunt, is it? Well, this is about making sure that Australia is less likely to be facing severe bushfires, uh, less likely to be having severe droughts. We are barely a week out of winter and Australia is burning. We're being warned that our rivers are drying up and we are facing record drought, right? We need government to be, we need Parliament to take this government by the shoulders, shake it, wake it up and shake some sense into it. Once we recognise that we are facing a global emergency where the commitments under the Paris Agreement at the moment have us on track for three and a half degrees of global warming, right? Now, at four degrees of global warming, there's only carrying capacity for a billion people on this planet. Now, seven into, how does seven billion go down to one billion? Not without a lot of starvation, a lot of war, a lot of conflict. We are facing an emergency. Once we recognise that, then we can reorient the whole of government policies towards it. But at the moment, we've got a government that seems to be in denial, that says on the one hand it believes in the science of climate change and on the other hand has us on track for three and a half degrees of global warming. Now, in a few weeks' time, um, there'll be a test for the Prime Minister. Uh, the world leaders are meeting uh, to, uh, at the, the request of the UN to discuss how we're going to cut pollution even further to meet the Paris Agreement targets, which Australia is not on track to do at the moment. Um, Scott Morrison is going to be in the United States meeting Donald Trump. Uh, the question is, is he going to hang around for an extra couple of days and go to this summit and say, yep, we want to make sure we keep global warming below two degrees or ideally one and a half, and we're going to do more to make sure we meet it. So this, this isn't a stunt. This is about saying this has got to be the number one priority of politics in this country.
I think one of the most telling examples of recent times was uh, Theresa May and one of the last things she did as PM in the UK was to declare a climate emergency. This is the country that led the Industrial Revolution based on coal. I remember the very painful um, uh, and disruptive uh, coal mining strikes in the Thatcher era, for example, and they have made a huge transition away from coal. And uh, I think that uh, they stand as a glaring, a, a glaring example to a country like Australia of what you can do if you decide to do it, manage it over a couple of decades, uh, do it sensibly, uh, take account of the, uh, the opportunities on one side and the impacts on the other. But if you manage the process, it's, uh, it's no telling how far you can go. And rather than be a laggard in the climate debate, we should be a leader because we've got tremendous sun and wind and other resources. We have the capacity to, to lead the world in, in the response to, to climate change, and we've just squandered that opportunity over the last several decades. You've been quite consistently critical of the Liberal Party over this handling of this issue, and you're quite passionate about it. Mm. Do you still consider yourself a Liberal? Well, I have you know, predominantly Liberal values in terms of the significance of the, of the individual and uh, the significance of market forces and uh, low levels of government and government regulation. But having said that, I mean, what I see in the Liberal Party today is if you were a true Conservative, you, and you did believe in small government, you did believe in low levels of regulation, you did believe in market forces, you'd immediately put a price on carbon. That is the obvious Liberal solution to this problem. I and think fundamental to the, to the transition that's <laughs> got to be made. So, you know, I just think they've lost their roots, quite frankly. So you I don't said, consider yourself a Liberal now? Well, I'm, I've just explained how I am a Liberal. I'm not a member of the party. Uh, my dues lapsed. But uh, having said that, I mean, I'm still, still motivated by the same things that got me into Parliament in the first place. I said bushfires don't care whether you vote Liberal, Labor, Greens... It's or not a political issue. Like, droughts don't care <clears throat> who you vote for. At the end of the day, we're facing a threat that is going to hurt a lot of people in Australia. It's going to mean um, life will be much tougher for farmers. It's going to mean not only going to every winter wondering when the next bushfire and heatwave is going to hit and how many people are going to die, but we're now worrying about it in sp uh, every summer, rather. We're now worrying about it in spring and even just barely out of winter, right? If we just so... go to this issue of actually declaring a climate emergency, mm. bushfires don't really care about that either. What, what difference does it make to actually call it a climate emergency as opposed to just be discussing climate policy? Hopefully mobilise activity. Hopefully get, get uh, well, I mean, uh, you talk about being in politics. I think uh, when I was in politics, if 50% of the people thought something was a good idea, I'd have a damn good look at it. Um, now you've got 60, 70, 80% of people saying we want decisive leadership by government in response to climate, we want a transition to renewables, we want a movement to a ve electric vehicles, we want to cut pollution levels on the roads and so on. Thousands of elements to this, all of which should be, we should be doing. And uh, so I think the opportunity for this country is enormous. It's, it is about mobilising the country. When the parliament declares that we're at war, it's a sign that it's all shoulders to the wheel to defend the national interest. Um, when parliament declares and when the government declares that we are now facing a climate emergency, it's an understanding that we've got to stop doing the things that are making global warming worse and start doing things that are going to make Australians safer. So um, the first step in fixing a problem is admitting that you've got a problem. And at the moment, I think that governments have lied to us, lied to people about the severity of the problem and how urgent the need is to act. And there have been some exceptions in recent past, but at the moment, Scott Morrison's out there saying it's all OK, we're all on track to meet our targets. Well, we're not. What we're on track for is seeing the kind of drought that we've got now becoming a feature of our way of life. Not an aberrant effect, not something that happens every now and then, but a feature of our way of life. And I don't think people want that. Well, we'll have to leave it there, but we'll be keeping a keen eye on the crossbench today. Adam Bant from the Greens and former Liberal leader John Hewson, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.